Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 22nd, 2015, and this is the wrong screen again. <laughs> I just updated XSplit, and I am running on like four hours of sleep. I have tried to record this dang daily like six times. Please let me just do this right. It is Tutorial Tuesday. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today we're going to be learning about finalizing a piece. And we're going to be doing it with our good old split tiny splatoonies. We're all a little loony because it is done. It's done. Thank you. And I wasn't working diligently on this last night. I know that's what I would like you to believe. But no, I was just up late watching YouTube videos. Just completely horsing around. Horsing around. But before we get into uh, what we learned here, because we are taking the piece from where we were two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, way the heck back then to where it is now, right? Doing these paint overs and I'll flip back and forth so you can see the differences, kind of polishing things up, cleaning things up. And I have a time lapse, fear not, if you want to see what that looks like. But before we get into said time lapse, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane because you guys are amazing. Look at these amazing pieces right here. You guys are awesome. If you'd like to go see all these pieces for yourself, don't worry, just type in that little tiny URL right there and you can take you straight to the Facebook. You can see all these pieces for yourself. There's millions of them, billions of them. Go check them out, like the page, submit your artwork and get featured on the show. And most importantly of all, come get some cookies. All right, and if I do stutter today, that is because I am in fact slightly zombified, okay? But that's okay because we're just gonna just gonna roll with it. Just gonna roll with it. Here we go. This is the last take. This is the last take, and I'm not gonna do it again. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about Splatini Splatoonies. All right, so um oh actually let's just get right into the time lapse, shall we? Yeah, let's get right into it. So this is picking up from where we were two weeks ago. And that is uh, just after we learned to color our lines, we colored our lines, and now we're finally moving into the OP layer. We are becoming overpowered and painting over everything that we've laid down. And a lesson that I've learned over and over again, and I want to tell this to you because it is very important, is that it is, it is imperative that you understand, imperative that you understand that you've done all the hard, once you got to this point, once you get to the paint over stage, you've done all the hard work already. Breathe a sigh of relief because you just, you did the switchbacks up the hill, you know, on your bike with no gears, right? You got to the top and it's like a hot summer day, but now it's time to take the downhill, right? Take your feet off the pedals, just grab the handlebars, feel the wind, the wind of completion flying through your hair, right? Because your piece is nearly done, right? It's just time to coast right on down, coast right on down. Don't even worry about anything. Post on down, and then you're done. Then you are done. Yes, so, uh, but the problem is that a lot of times people don't do that. I don't do that. Oftentimes I'm still trying to like define things. I'm trying to almost like redo line art when already a lot of this stuff has already been taken care of. Really all I have to do is just keep in mind that I am blending lines, blending lines and uh, fixing my areas of contrast, right? And I'll explain, what, if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll explain what that means in just a moment because you have this entertaining, this amazing entertaining time-lapse that actually doesn't teach you anything, but it, it is very entertaining. And then I will do the teaching right after this, right? So before we get into the live technique or the real-time tutorial where I show you how to blend lines as well as there was something else that I wanted to do, but I'll remember it when we get to it. But uh, before we get into that, let's talk about what I liked about this piece and what I didn't like about this piece. First of all, what I didn't like about this piece was that I'm not used to drawing like multiple characters on one scene. And whenever I do that, it's always a major challenge for me. Uh, but it is a challenge that I accept. I accept that challenge very well and we meet it head on. And I was really, really happy with how it turned out, right? Because, uh, you know, most of the time I'm very tempted to just do like one character and it's just kind of like, you know, just like a bus shot. That's a fancy way of saying just like the torso and then the head, you know, just kind of like a, a simple, more like an easy uh, type of piece, right? But I wanted to do something a little bit more kind of creative, something that people I haven't seen done yet, right? So I, I thought, okay, well, let's lay together these, let's lay out some thumbnails. Let's have some awesome like flow happening. Maybe we could have like uh, the guy up here, and then the girl down here, and then, uh, you know, there's like these paint splashes behind them, but the most important thing is that those paint splashes will create sort of like an ambient occlusion effect. They'll create an ambient light that lights the characters from the backsides, 
And the challenging part is going to be that the light that's interacting with them is going to be the opposite color of what they are, right? So like orange light lighting the, uh, the blue kid's hair, right? And blue light lighting the orange girl's hair. And that was really, really fun. And we learned all about that. If you wanna see how we went about choosing those colors and making it look like, you know, cause you might ask, well, how do I know what color to paint orange in a blue light? We learned about that a couple weeks ago and that was choosing ambient colors just as a refresher. What happens is when you light something with blue, right? You, you wanna pay attention to your little Richter scale over here. See this, all the colors of the rainbow at your disposal right here. Okay, so you're gonna move to blue, which is right here. So you're gonna cross on over through kind of magenta, blue, and all that stuff. And then what happens when you light a color with an opposite color light? Uh, basically what happens is it moves toward that color and then it darkens and desaturates. Okay, that's just kind of the quick and dirty way of saying it, right? And then we end up with something kind of like that. This is even more desaturated and even more blue. But we went into detail with that a couple weeks ago. Don't need to get into that again. Case in point, that was something that I really enjoyed doing and I like the effect. I like the effect that came through on this and I'm very proud of myself, very proud of myself. And uh, I hope you guys learned something good from that. All right, so now that we talked about what I did like, what I did not like, let's move into, uh, let's talk about those overpainting layers. Let me show you guys what you should be doing, okay? Because there's a couple things that you wanna keep in mind, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer on top of this. And this will be our notes layer. Oh, how dandy. How oh, dandy. Okay, so let's take a look, a very, very close look at this. So I'm gonna go ahead and dissect this. So we have our paint over layers right here, and then we have our lines right here, right? So this is basically what our character masks, or this is what our character mask and just um, color masks look like without the lines on top of it. So these are things like, say, like the sweater on the girl. See, we take that away. It's all just one color, it's all one mask. And the reason why that's handy is because we lock the pixels. If you look down, you can see that little magical lock right there. And then we achieve that by hitting this button right there. That button right there, the little checkerboard, chessboard. You play chess with your Photoshop piece and you lock those pixels, okay? So, but that's not what we're getting into right now. The thing we wanna talk about right now is lines, okay? So let's take away the character mask and let's just look at the lines. So if you'll notice that, and let me go ahead and get rid of this too. So if you'll notice, all the lines are actually colored. They're all colored. And we learn to do this. We learn to do this because this is step one in making your lines disappear, okay? And the way that you do that is you keep all your lines on their own layers, right? So you can divide it into as many layers as you want. For this one specifically, I did like the girl on one layer and then I did the gun on another, but it could have just easily have been all in the same layer. You know, I just separate it for fun uh, and it just helps. It helps when you have like two major, like different things happening, like say like you have the shape of the girl, right? And then behind that shape is the shape of the gun. You know, so having those two entities separate really helps. So just keep that in mind. That's what's going through my mind when I separate out my lines. So let's talk about once we got our colors in and our lines selected or our lines colored, now let's talk about the paint overs, paint overs. So here's what we're gonna do because we're trying to get to this. We're trying to get to this. And I want you to notice more than anything the actual subtlety between the two. Notice how there's actually not that much happening like we're, we're adding some colors, making things more vibrant, we're kind of smoothing things out, but really what exactly is happening here? And that's what I'm going to explain to you right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this right here. So a line in general, let me talk about the science behind a line. When you draw, say you draw an apple, right? You draw an apple here, what do you draw? You draw this and then it's got a little of that and then a stem. Now, why do you draw those lines? Why do you draw those? It's because basically wherever you draw a line is an area of contrast. It's an area of contrast. So, I mean, this is kind of like a, a crude example, but let's say that the apple, like you can see that the apple exists there because it is on top of a white background. But imagine that apple was backed by the same exact color that the apple was. Like say it's like a red background that's the exact same value and color as that apple. Then you wouldn't really, it would be hard to know where to place the lines. Like if it was just a black and white, you know, picture, you know, it might 
appear to be something like this and you'd see like maybe like the leaf sticking out or something like that you know what i mean so okay the reason why i go through that the reason why i said that is because the way that you start making your lines disappear is with contrast you want to be thinking about contrast so here is what i always do so you can see clearly here that we have a line we have a line that we want to make disappear, right? This line we want to have disappear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, well, the reason that that line exists in the first place is because there's an area of contrast between the gun and the hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint in this line and then I'm going to, basically you're thinking about in terms of like what's gonna be the dark shape and what's gonna be the light shape, okay? So similar to what we were talking about, the apple on the background. If it's the same color as the apple, it doesn't show, right? But if it's a different color or a different value, then you still have a line. Notice how I'm actually just gonna paint this line away and I'm gonna take this color and paint it right next to it. And sometimes what I like to do is I'll actually just take that line. Sometimes it's nice to do this. You kind of paint that blue in there and then you can kind of like gradate it. You can gradate it right into there. Now see how the line still exists there? But now it is turned, it's almost like it's thinned, it's, uh, you make it disappear. And, but it still exists because of the contrast. It exists because of shapes. So that's what I want you guys to be thinking about as you're going about doing this stuff, okay? And again, realize that you've done all the hard work already and that you don't need to go in there and redraw lines. You don't need to do any of that. All you're doing is just blending. You're blending lines, blending stuff away, okay? So let's take a look here on the ear on the ear. Okay, so what is going to be the dark color and what's going to be the light color? This is an interesting point because now you, it's more up to you to decide what you want to happen because there's two possible solutions here. One is we could say, okay, well, this purple line, I actually really like that. Let's just go ahead and blend that right to the edge. See? So now we have it. It's blending. It's going to a dark color and then we have that, the the contrast between right here and there creates that line, okay? But there's another example, there's another solution to this. There's another solution to this. And I think it's the one that I end up going with. And that is, what if we made it a lighter value? What if we made it a lighter value than this right here, okay? And the way that we can do that is we look around and say, hey, is there any tools that I could use here? Is, are there any like light sources that I might not be taking into account? And sure enough, we have that blue light source. Hey, okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually light this. We're gonna paint in a little bit of that blue. And I'm doing my blending technique by laying down a little bit of color. This is basically how I blend. I have my thumb on my Alt key. I lay down a color like that, and then I Alt click that. And then I'll press a little bit lighter, Alt click that, press a little lighter. And see how you can get like these nice transitions, these nice smooth transitions like that. So that's what I'm doing. I call it alt click. Alt click method. So check this out. Awesome. Now what we've done is we've said, okay, this is the light. The ear is now the lighter value. The ear is the lighter value, and then this is the darker value. So that's how I go about making my lines disappear. I'm keeping in mind all of my lighting sources, all of my lighting areas, and how they're going to affect my character. And then I go through, and then I slowly start um, painting them away. But I still even keep some of those lines. I keep some of those lines, but it's almost like I just add more color to them. I add more color to them. But you can see that's basically what I did right here. I put that blue right there and then uh, did all that stuff. I did this, I, I cleaned this tentacle up better than than uh, the, the freaking example that I just did, but whatever, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I, it's mostly for demonstration purposes. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is um, the importance of transitions and like, especially in like areas of like skin and like living tissue, we're gonna be doing something called subsurface scattering. You guys have learned, I'm sure you've heard this word thrown around all the time. Nobody really knows what it means, but I know what it means. I know what it means and I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you. And that basically means that on your transitions, on your transitions, your transitions are going to saturate, okay? So take a look at this. So we have orange right here. And then as we go to dark orange, do you see how we go from here to here? Basically, we went down to the left. And the way that we explain that in art terms is we say we darken and desaturate. 
darken and desaturate when it goes to the left. But when you introduce subsurface scattering, you're indicate you're thinking about like the light going into that tissue, bouncing around in all the little blood vessels and then getting shot back out into your retinas, right? So what that does is it turns it more red or basically the color of the blood of your character. I mean, in this case, I mean, when you die in Splatoon, you explode into whatever color uh, you were getting shot with. So I guess in this case, uh, the girl's blood is blue, but in general, I like to stay red. I like to stay red. And because we're using orange, it just looks really good to, to do it this way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to instead use this color for our transitions, okay? We're gonna use this color. And then it can go back desaturated. But see how just in this area, this is basically your key area that you wanna consider subsurface happening. Because you have your lit area, you have your lit area right here, and then it goes right into this area. Right during that transition is the imperative point, the imperative point that you have subsurface, okay? Imperative point, don't forget about that. So the, way, the, the point where the light starts to curve around your subjects. And that's basically why we get this, like this really yummy transition. Let's look at that, let's look at that. So we got that desaturated and then look, look at this. We went down, but then we saturated. And then we go down to this point and it's even more saturated and then we go to the blue and then it comes right on back, boomerangs back. And when you have that type of transition, basically, namely, uh, I call it the boomerang effect. You start desaturated in your lights, saturate in your transitions, then go back to desaturated in your shadows, all the while doing a hue shift, which is also something that we talked about, which is basically where you move from one point of the color, uh, the color spectrum, to another point, right? And there's a whole other uh, episode where I talked about doing that. You guys can definitely go check that out but that makes it awesome, that makes it super awesome. So another tutorial on subsurface scattering, you can only get this here, people, only get this here on the Kane Kale Show. Um, <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm being sarcastic. All right, but I hope that I explained it well enough to warrant, um, uh, to, to help you guys out. All right, so with all that out of the way, I think that's gonna call it good, yeah. And uh, oh, the most important thing is that if you want to check out this PSD for yourself, you want to check out all the PO layers, all the OP layers for yourself, they are going to be available for download on the Patreon. So just click that link, you can go support the show. And speaking of supporting the show, I need to say thank you to my amazing sponsors, but I gotta find the button, there we go. Thank you so much to the defenders of the Can Kale Kingdom, David Chariello and Laura Bashir. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. If you guys would like to support the show and get a cool caricature drawn of you, the details are also on Patreon. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, before we take off. Oh, speaking of sponsors on the Patreon, I do have some awesome news for you guys. Uh, a lot of you have been asking for critiques, so I did put up a an option, another option for those of you who want to support the show. On here, right here, it is, I'm limiting to three people. Three people are able to get in contact with me through email and I will write you guys critiques on your artwork or we can talk about mental game or uh, if you want, I, I, I think I even put like advice on the ladies, whatever you want. You know, I, can, I can help you out. I can get you what you need. All right. So if that sounds interesting to you, just click that link over there, support the show and get cool stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I'm going to go take a nap. I'm going to go take a nap because I am very under rested and I'm feeling quite, quite, quite. You see, this is what I gotta, this is what I gotta deal with. All right, I'm gonna go take a nap, <laughs> but you guys take care. I'll see you guys on Thursday and we'll have an awesome, um, thoughtful plan. And uh, I'm gonna go dream about it right now. So you guys take care and until next time, see ya.
I so sleepy.